Hello, my name is Nur Senatutar and I consider myself as a bookworm. I love reading and talking about books, which is exactly why I invite you to come on a journey with me through some of the most well-known libraries of Istanbul. I'll be talking to librarians and bookworms to discover the reading habits of this big city. Shall we begin? I'll be going to Atatürk, Beyazıt, Ahmet Hamdi Tanpınar, Salt Research and Nevmekan libraries. Well, I am rather excited. This city is said to have over 15 million people living here. So imagine the millions of different ways to enjoy a book. The first stop is one of the most central libraries of the ever so busy Istanbul. It's called Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality Taksim Atatürk Library. But that's too long. And everybody simply calls it Atatürk Library. When I was in university, I used to come here a lot myself. Now, years after graduation, it's such a relief that I'm not here to worry about an exam. I'll be talking to the director. Director of Atatürk Library, Ramazan Mindar. Thank you very much for having us here. Um, could you introduce this library for us? Uh, what kind of books do you have? Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality Taksim Atatürk Library was founded in 1939 in a school in the Beyazit district. We only moved to our current location in 1981. We have a big collection of rare works, like the first newspaper from the Ottoman Empire and some of the earliest maps and postcards, around 6 million documents from the Ottoman era, long before the alphabet reform of 1928 happened, are stored in our online platform. We're also proud of our foreign language books. We have rare editions in English, German, French, Arabic, and Hebrew. So both national and international academics use our archives. And because we're always full to the brim with visitors, since 2014, we became Turkey's first library to stay open 24-7. Then, some other libraries followed suit and started providing the same service. Because it's always open, people take refuge in the library in the dead of the night sometimes. And thanks to its central location, Atatürk Library is considered one of the, if not the most convenient libraries in the city. The three-floor hexagonal building looks very industrial. But once inside, you can appreciate nature as light filters in through walls of windows. Many librarians like Mindar say the wealth of resources is not tapped into enough. They're happy that students queue at the gates of libraries to study here every single day. But they also want to encourage visitors to reach into the shelves, browse and borrow books. A habit that he thinks needs to be cultivated from childhood. We should try to focus on making children read more. We don't really take that age group into much consideration. We need to invest in children's education much more. For instance, both private and public school libraries need to be improved. And there should be an encouraging environment for reading at schools. If schools saw reading as a big part of the students' success, a lot would change. So, at our library, we have reading hours for preschool children. These sort of habits are built when you're young. We see that those children who had a reading time in their childhood grow to have a much stronger relationship with books when they're older. I suppose, in a way, it's expected to hear a librarian say, children don't read enough. Although, calculating who reads how much is a tricky business. Library attendance figures are as elusive as trying to count who reads what and how much. I could very well be downloading pirate books online. I could read 20 books a year like that, and no one can really count that book as sold or as read. And then there's the argument that we read more than ever because of online magazines, articles and long blog posts. 
or let's say that you read about three essays a day during your master's degree. In a month, that's about as long as a book. But again, you can't really count those pages as books because they're published separately. So, can we really say that you didn't read a book? See, I told you it was tricky. And I didn't even count the social media readings. Reading headlines on Twitter or daily inspirational quotes on Instagram may not count as literary pursuits. Yes, but we're constantly reading something, are we not? Now, it's time for my next library, but before moving on... In between my bookish destinations, I stopped people in the streets to ask about their reading habits, actual books they've been reading. And here's what they said. A book called Discussion on Books and Libraries. Probably... Black Star. I cannot remember the author. Um, it was for a class, but I enjoyed the book, so I continued to read it. Uh, it was um, a book from Michael Connolly. It's called Las Vault. I don't know the title in English, but uh, it's a thriller. And Mil Soleil Splendid. Um, it's a book of, about a family in Afghanistan, but uh, I can't remember the author. I don't know. <laughs> It was a spiritual book. I have been reading a book about Prophet Muhammad's life. A book on Muslim Armenians for an essay. A book called Ottoman Mobilization in the First World War. Assassin's Creed Revelations. It's so much fun. Historian Halil Inaljik's book on the Ottoman Empire. Uh, Paulo Coelho. Uh, I don't remember the name of the, of the book. Paolo Coelho. La figlia del capitano, Pushkin, it is about uh, Russian war. Sapiens by Harari. Let's go now and discover the hidden beauties of a historic library. But this time, I'll be asking questions on the minus seventh floor. The director of Bayezid State Library, Abdul Qadir Öztürk, um, thank you very much for having us in this beautiful storage of the library. I'm delighted to be here. Um, can we talk about uh, the history of this place? Can you give us numbers about this place? This place was first built in the early 16th century during the Ottoman Empire, though it was only in 1884 that it was renovated and turned into the first state library. But this doesn't mean that the Ottoman Empire didn't have a library before. The previous ones were all private until Beazit Library was opened. This library has a lot of firsts, actually. First library that provided audiobooks for the hearing impaired, the first children's library, and the first printing initiatives of the Ottomans. We have around 1.5 million books. So far, in 2019, over 66,000 people have used our library. And then I asked his opinion about the reader profile of Bayezid Library. And overall, I wanted to know what Östurol thought about how we fare as readers. After all, he spent decades as a library director. These librarians are not just running a business. They're in the heart of the city's literary scene. Do you think now we have a different sort of relationship with books? The people I see at Biazit Library consist of almost only writers, academics and researchers. Unfortunately, I never see young people coming here just to see what we have on the shelves. They don't browse around the shelves just to get lost or borrow a novel. Most of them are here to study for their next exam. They're not interested in reading for pleasure. I grew up in the countryside in eastern Turkey. Back then, there weren't any means to acquire books, let alone buy them for yourself but we read whatever we found. The new generation doesn't have that enthusiasm for reading. They seem to be only interested in their phones. Now, we provide millions of books for our young generations, but they don't even reach for them. It's actually sad. Ever the romantic when it comes to books, 
Asurul, after our conversation, kindly offered to teach me some of the tricks of his trade, like how to organize bookshelves in a library storage. I watched what happens behind the scenes of binding a book and saw for myself the mystery of the tiny lift for requesting books in a library. And I ended up learning about a day in the life of a librarian. What fun, honestly. All dreams came true. Well, back to the subject. This library is an archive library, which means they are responsible of collecting all kinds of documents that has ever printed in Turkey. And because it was founded during the Ottoman era, they also store thousands of Ottoman prints like newspapers, magazines and books. I got to see centuries-old books and newspapers from the Ottoman era. As a book lover, it felt so good to be able to flip through an old book. So, naturally, their storerooms are groaning with books. Even the corridors are full of boxes with books waiting to be sorted. But as the director informs me, they're absolutely thrilled to be the guardians of history. The readers' rooms are a mixture of past and present. When you look up, you see the remnants of Ottoman Empire while the modern furniture is a reminder of the present. Bayezid State Library is well-loved by students, and it's also considered as one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. Even though I'm so inspired to sit down and start reading myself, we have more libraries to see. So, on to the next library. Oh. But first, have you ever thought of how many books do you read in a year? Depending on the subject, I read three or four books a month. Uh, probably about three or four, like for pleasure. I have to read textbooks for school, but I probably read three or four just for fun. Uh, between 10 and 15? Yeah. But most of them during summer. <laughs> yeah, during, during the holiday times. Around 35? I never actually count how much, but I read a lot. Though I think it's somewhere around 50 books a year. I read 10 to 12 books a month. I usually read four books a month. I just started to build a reading habit, so I don't know how much I read. 25, 26. 20, uh, 20. Almost. I read 30 books last year and I don't want to read less than that this year. My next stop is Ahmet Hamdi Tanpınar Literature Museum Library. The name you see in the title, Ahmet Hamdi Tanpınar, is one of the most prominent names of Turkish modernism. His poetry collections and novels are among the modern Turkish classics, and they are taught at schools. One of his most famous novels, The Time Regulation Institute, is set to narrate the struggles between tradition and modernity in a lyrical way. This museum library tries to tap into Tampona's creativity and inspire many more readers and writers. Tunjay Doğan, librarian at Ahmet Hamdi Tanpınar Literature Museum Library. Um, thank you very much, first of all, for having us here. Um, can we start with explaining what is a literature museum library? This is an international concept. You can see the literature museum libraries in many big cities. Famous writers like Shakespeare, Goethe, and Dostoevsky contribute a lot to the cities they live in. There are museum libraries like ours everywhere around the world. We introduce the life and works of Ahmet Hamdi Tampınar to anyone who is interested. We have talks and studies on his novels and poetry. We aspire to get to know about his books. 
and we invite all book lovers to join us. Specialized literature museum libraries are important because new generations are well informed on big authors. Unlike the previous ones, this library is set in a relatively smaller building and they provide a very niche collection of books. This is another historic location, but then again, that in Istanbul is not difficult to find. This 16th century building used to be where the Sultan saluted the troops before they left for military expeditions. And that's why people used to call it the Salutation Manor. After the establishment of Turkish Republic, it was the headquarters of the Liberal Arts Institute. But since 2011, it's been turned into what it is today. It's a specialized library, and people who are interested in literary pursuits frequent it. And there's a piano downstairs. Apparently, there are occasional sing-alongs that happen when someone starts playing. And you thought libraries were stiff and boring, didn't you? The librarian Tunjai Doan told me about their efforts of attracting people who exclusively want to read here. We don't want to be one of those libraries where you only see students. So we made the decision not to allow people who only need a space to bury their noses in their exam prep books. Then people got confused and asked, what does a person do in a library if not study? We want to show them how many things they can also be doing in a library. This is a living, breathing cultural hub. We want to encourage reading novels and poetry collections or reading up on a research paper, but utilizing our resources. We value our Turkish writers a lot, and we give seminars on important names in our canon, like Ahmet Hamdi Tampınar. And it's not just that. We want this space to be a cultural hub where people play the piano and bring their child to listen to a fairy tale and meet their favorite novelist. Having said all this, I should also say that we do acknowledge the need of a space to study for exams and whatnot. But we have a focused collection that should be taken advantage of. And it's not like we're being rude. We always help them find a library better suited to their needs if it's not here. And it's like he says, at Tampunar Library, as well as books to read, they're providing an intellectual and cultural environment. There are music performances, theater plays, and talks on bookish subjects, mostly with writers as hosts. Doan says they're very pleased with the reaction to the events. Now, obviously there is no right or wrong when it comes to reading a book or going to a library. Everybody has different needs and wants, so there are different types of libraries, and it's only natural. So, the polar opposite of Tampanar Library is Salt Research, which encourages study spaces. Since the world of knowledge is online at the click of a button, what is needed now is space rather than source material. They offer a portion of their space just for researching and studying. They say that their books focus on visual practices, the built environment, social life and economic history. I should add that if you're looking for English books, it's most likely to find them at Salt compared to the other libraries I've been to so far. This place used to be a bank, so they definitely have a good system to keep their archives safe. Another central location, Salt Research is many students' favorite spot too. The all-white interior design and high ceilings are quite appealing and perfect for social media. There's a trend of reaching a lot of the materials online, and that's, that's a fact. So maybe you are not so much required to uh, go to the library and borrow a book, but that's why the libraries need to change to become spaces where the community can uh, have their form, their own uses. 
And within that, um, because SALT is a, in the end, SALT research is a specialized library, uh, I, I would expect people to be with the mind of uh, production and not for the necessity of uh, producing for consumption, but for the necessity of the intellectual, I would say, uh, practice or exercise. Reading is wonderful, yes. But when it's a particularly good book, it's something else. Reading a good book makes me feel like I'm actually flying on top of the clouds. I feel every word very intensely. Oh, it's, it's euphoric because like everybody interprets the text differently. So I get to kind of envision my own world in that book. It's pretty cool. Completely isolated. I mean, when it's a good book, it's like I completely forgot where I am. Like I'm in the story and, uh, and you feel empathy for the characters and you're like inside. So basically, yeah. It needs to be completely isolated from the rest. For me, it's, it's when I get um, like s emotional, like very sad or very happy. Uh, this is the sensation when I really like a book. It's when I, I have feelings about the book and I, I cry or I, I start to laugh or anything like this. I feel elated and imagine my soul stretched out. After a good book, I feel spiritually enriched. It's so good, it's like finding a treasure box. I forget all my problems and I transport to a different reality. In adventure books, I feel like I'm in the story and doing all the running around, so I feel very happy. I feel calm and also more knowledgeable. Ah, <sighs> uh, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> if it is a good book, uh, I feel happy and... Um... Cry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel at peace. In big cities like Istanbul, people spend hours commuting for work and school. This time is a golden opportunity for some people to catch up on reading. But then, there's also smartphones for entertainment as we hustle on. As I'm crossing the Bosphorus for my next location, it's impossible not to think about what Bayezid Library Director said about our relationship with our phones and how it affects our reading life. While my inner debate continues on the subject, we arrive at another example of answering the latest demands of people. This is Nemeka. The local authorities turned the registry office into a culture hub with a library, restaurant, art gallery and a seminar room. The reason why it's not just a library but a cafe as well is that we wanted to attract everyone. The new generation love this book cafe concept. We wanted to design a mutual point for everyone if you want to read, there is a quiet zone. If you want to have a snack, there is a restaurant on the ground floor. And there is even a daycare for parents who need to study. The appeal of this place is hidden in its easygoing facade. And the Bosphorus view doesn't hurt either. The turnout is even better than they expected. This place is always crammed with people. And after the success of Nemekan, many other municipalities in Istanbul want to follow suit and open more places like this. And it goes to further prove that there is not one way of doing the reading thing. Nowadays, Americanos are served in bookish places. There are specialist libraries on modernist writers. You could be going to the library to finish a paper, pull an all-nighter for an exam, or borrow books like all these librarians wish you to. And it's all a matter of personal choice. 
Whether you read ebooks, physical copies, borrow from your grandmother's library, or buy a new book every single week, it's all up to you, really. At the end of the day, whatever you decide to read, reading is a magical experience one way or the other. Nur Senat Tash, TRT World, Istanbul.